Interesting to find a racetrack where they run now and where they ran back then and see what the lap times are. Guys, this is for the race lead, and we are three abreast here in historic Trans Am. The battle for P1 is on. Hildebrand has the lead at the moment. For how long, I wonder? Jim Haig was on the outside. Now he's dropped back to third. He was leading for a moment. And in the middle of all of that is uh, Patrick Byrne. Ah, love it. I talked to uh, uh, John Hildebrand in the um, in the paddock, and he said that he had blown a radiator hose. So he oh. was he works on his own car, and and um, he uh, was repairing the radiator hose when I was talking to him. Yeah, that car that Patrick Byrne is driving is the first ever factory Trans Am Boss 302 uh, Mustang that was prepared by car craft then Shelby Racing so again a very very important piece of history and about to take the lead into turn 11 has another change of lead Hildebrand will go high and wide now he'll click it back and trying to defend that position from Haig in the all orange number 16 and we've got a doozy of a battle on about to start lap 7 of 10 and this is cracking racing I was up in uh, turn two shooting yesterday, uh, and uh, Patrick Byrne coming through turn two was really something to watch. I'll bet. Uh, he's right on the edge. Yeah, I hadn't realized. I've seen him race, and obviously we know his dad as well, but uh, I hadn't realized he was an Asian Le Mans series champion, and having spent as much time as I have out in Asia doing motor racing, I know that's a prestigious mm -hmm. championship to win, and not an easy one because the tracks they go to are hot, a Formula One spec mostly, uh, places like Shanghai, um, Shala, uh, excuse me, Malaysia. And look at this. Again, Hildebrand takes it high and wide through the long left-hander. And this is exactly what happened last time out. Now can he hold on? That's, so he's great downhill, is Hildebrand, <laughs> but he loses out through the S's uh, on the run back. So we'll see if it happens again. It's a it's a big car, and I'm amazed that he runs that car without power steering and uh, uh, without uh, power brakes. That Camaro of Jim Hague's was brought new in April 1970 in Foley, Minnesota, and after accumulating 94 miles, Walter Bear and his friends spent several months turning it into a competitive race car. Uh, they all then went on to win, uh, excuse me, they went on to take part in five Trans Am races with a respectable eighth place at Elkhart Lake. Wow. And now involved in 2024 in a three-way battle for the win here of the prestigious Velocity Invitation. Well, Hildebrand's done a good job. He's holding them off, but look, see how they're catching him here? Yep. The longer the race goes on on a hot day like this, the more the tires change, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially on a hot day like this. Well, there's nothing between that top three. And in fact, there's some good battles all the way down through the top ten. So uh, even uh, the likes of O'Neill, who's now up to six, I may add, having started at the back. So this is a good run by Jeffrey O'Neill. That's what he's up to. And he's now got uh, a little bit more uh, tough competition when it comes to Fudge and uh, Adams, because they are pretty handy in their historic Trans Ams and always have been. Now Jim Haig now at the front in the all-orange number 16. And there's your 45 of Adams, who started on the front row, takes the inside line and takes the lead. Nicely done. Or takes third, excuse me. I should say, because Hildebrand had been at the sharp end and now he's down to fourth. That's an it's a, it's a interesting change around quickly. That's what I love about these cars, is they're so evenly matched. So some great racing in this one, and just as you'd expect, Patrick Byrne in the all-blue Shelby 302 from 69. Now back in the lead and into 11. And about to start the penultimate lap. 
Still a four-way battle for the win, though. Jeffrey O'Neill trying to make his way into this group, and he's up to, what, fifth now? Yep, sure enough, Jeffrey O'Neill, there he is, and he's going to try and catch this group of four before the end is over. There he is, just coming under the bridge, and he's catching him quickly, isn't he? He is. Well, this is what we wanted. It's uh, always a good finish with these guys. Well, it's pretty cool, isn't it, to yep. think that uh, here we are some 60 years on, <laughs> still racing the exact same car. All right, different drivers. Uh, yep. That we can't do. But we, uh, we may not be able to preserve the humans, but we can certainly preserve the cars, and that's what's happened. Here comes Burn again for the lead. An inside move on the carousel and makes it stick. Haig has to relinquish the lead. Whoa, Hildebrand going very <laughs> wide there. Just uh, manages to get it all together. We had a crash earlier in one of the other groups. Uh, sadly, Martin Lauber coming to foul uh, in, in that particular corner and hitting the wall. Oh, oh burn. Get a, a little too hot out of there, but it uh, holds it together. Here comes Jeffrey O'Neill. You can see all of their tires are hot right yeah, now. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. They're sli sli sliding away, yeah, aren't they? Yeah. Well, there's been some fitting tributes to Parnelli Jones over the year and uh, got to talk to many uh, a driver about him and heard nothing but great stuff and uh, even spoke to uh, Skip Barber about it yep. and that was an interesting conversation talking about the good old days yeah Lime Rock he was a, he was a force to be reckoned with yeah no kidding and actually even though a simple layout Lime Rock a tricky circuit to be really really good at it is there are a couple of leap of faith turns at Lime Rock where you just have to keep your foot in it and go uh, because of 